Welcome to the WDW News Today podcast. Thanks for joining us. My name is Eric Morton. With me, as always, is Tom Corliss, our esteemed leader here. And uh, we are in the middle of our series of unbuilt Disney attractions. This is actually yeah. our third part out of four on this topic mm. we're going to be having. Uh, and we've uh, covered a lot of ground already. There's some really cool stuff coming up. This is a good one. Uh, just these the the next couple. two are both really good. Yeah. This is going to be really good. Uh, before we get too deep, I want to let you know that we are watching this live with the WIGS members, our, the WW Interglobe Society. It's our Patreon group. Yeah. So you can uh, learn more about that at patreon.com slash WDWNT or WDWNT.com slash Patreon. Pick one. Both of them work. Uh, if you're at the $7 and up per month level, you get exclusive access to watch us do these live they're, several days ahead of time. Watching the chat. The live studio watching. view. We interact with the chat a little bit. Uh, typically, we record on, you know, on Fridays, and these air on Tuesdays. In this case, we're doing um, a few in a row, which is why Tom and I are both well, we're, we're dressed in the same clothes we were wearing the last episode. Because the last episode in my timeline yeah. only happened about 15 minutes ago. Correct. So uh, A lot but, of travel, though, coming up. Yeah. But the wigs, we appreciate you all all being here. Thank you for your support. Um, Like I said, if you want to learn more, there are some benefits to being a wigs. There's a Discord community for our wigs. There is also early access to events, early access to merchandise drops, and all that kind of good stuff. All the things that that we try to give little perks here and there when we can to uh, the wigs members in in exchange for their support and celebrating their support. So... With that being said, shall we jump right into it, or did you want to talk about something? No, I think we can go. We're going to jump right into it. Um, We're doing unbuilt attractions. These are things that were announced as were on the drawing board, or these were these reached some level of reality, uh, either concept art, what, or eventually leaked to the internet, or were leaked. Um, Not all of them on this list were things that were leaked. Um, Some were announced. Some were. yeah. Yeah, Fire Mountain. You want me to start with this one? Yeah, give, like tell us about Fire Mountain, Tom. Fire Mountain was to be located to the side of Pirates of the Caribbean and Adventureland at the Magic Kingdom and would have been the so-called weenie that drew guests deeper into the land. The attraction was going to be a combination of a standard roller coaster and a flying roller coaster, which meant at one point the ride would change from a track below guests to a track above them, and the vehicles would have guests lying face down in an attempt to mimic flying like a bird. The mountain would be a a gigantic volcano with the crew from Disney's Atlantis setting up a base camp just outside, fitting right in with Adventureland's story. Uh, Guests would fly and soar through and around the volcano with molten lava, dark and scary theming. Uh, There was an idea Fire Mountain would be the beginning of an expanded area of Adventureland. And as costs soared, the decision was made uh, to make it only a flying coaster and then sadly shelve the thing altogether. Um, We have done a very long in-depth series previously on our old podcast, then later on YouTube called Back to the Future. We did one episode. It was purely based on when we found the the proposals for Fire Mountain. So there's a whole three-hour show you could watch where we break down exactly what Fire Mountain entailed and discuss it at length. But this is probably one of the more famed, unannounced, unbuilt things, especially if you were um, in the Disney online community in its infancy in 1998, 1999, you couldn't escape the conversation of this thing. I remember being here when hype balloons went up for this and, vi- and the Villains Mountain, Bald Mountain, which we discussed yep. in the last show. Around the same time, this was an exciting time, but then neither of these uh, ever happened. I, the, I love this idea of making these ride vehicles more and more difficult to get into. The lying down thing, I think, would be a non-starter for a lot of people, right? It's... That's an uncomfortable position. Maybe like Tron, you have that Tron light cycle run. You're you're mounted on a yeah. on a light cycle. Well, I mean, and you can ride exist. in a fairly aggressive position, and that's uncomfortable. If you don't know, if the first yeah. few times I rode it, I didn't realize I could kind of push up when yeah. I was on it and look up. So when you are in that position, but you're looking forward, that like is hard on your neck. But flying coasters exist. I yeah, mean, they're not. I can't think of a – I mean, I've been on some similar – or I've been uh, – Bush Gardens in Tampa has Falcon's Fury. So Falcon's Fury, you, you're seated. 
you go up a drop tower, and when you get to the top of the drop tower, they rotate you into a diving position because yeah. you're diving like a fox. So it's a free I fall where that, you're right. rotated to where you're facing the ground. It's a pretty terrifying so thought to a lot of people. I just love one time the guy next to us dropped his gum out of his mouth, and we watched it float. It float down the ground. And then the guy started cursing because he couldn't believe how high he went. It's very tall. Um, um, I would still love this. It doesn't have to be this. I would yeah. still love something else deeper there in Adventureland. I think yeah. I think most people would. I think it would be cool. This is a cool idea. I think that I plot's going to end up being a hotel that's shaped like a volcano, but that's always been my theory that was talked about several years ago. Right. So I don't know. That's. But they, they've talked about that plot. Before and now that plot comes up against what that walkway, right? Um, the Grand Floridian walkway, right? So, I don't know. Someday, maybe that would be good. Um, but Atlantis, you know, there there was a period of time where they were all in on Atlantis, weren't they? Well, when you're, you're every movie you make is a smash hit, you, you didn't really expect one would not be, right? It's kind of what happened. Well, I mean, maybe wait and see. I guess that you don't have to come out with a ride the week after the movie like hits box office. Yeah, but you also have to come out with it 10 to 15 to 20 years after the movie comes out either, right? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I know that before we had some information that maybe there was going to be a retheme of Space Mountain to like Lightyear Mountain that didn't turn out to happen. Yeah, because the movie And a lot of people think that's because uh, the movie was a flop. I would I would assume um, that was a big or, part of it. Or somebody was just given an assignment to draw up some blue yeah. sky stuff for the hell of it. And uh, it didn't turn out either way. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have anything against pre-planning so that if the movie does hit, you can get moving right away, right? Um, sometimes yeah. they move fast, like a Frozen Ever After. Um, you know, was it was a pretty decent turnaround. It was a, a two and a half years. Yeah, but the, the ride already existed. They out. were just redecorating an existing ride. Yeah, and I, demolishing the there's queue. There's something and, to be said for being yeah. that quick to something, as opposed to Moana, right? Which was, was that a 2016? Movie and what we got the we got a walk through in now and yeah. what the, the Animal Kingdom thing would have been done in what twenty twenty six twenty seven yeah like that's eleven years later it took you eleven years after this movie succeeded to you know even but Zootopia th- right look at Zootopia was that was Zootopia twenty seventeen no Zootopia was twenty sixteen and we the first land is just opening in Shanghai in twenty twenty three yeah but I right? think the things if the things really connect with people then ten years isn't that long to wait for something like yeah, that. yeah but Look, you want to move we right? talked on like the last I, on the last you episode capitalize on it we talked on the last episode about Mary Poppins right that would still connect with people today and that it that would but I think there's something to be said for when you're sixty years now, old. you're in the timeline of the movie's existence right like you you the, the theme parks are an established thing right. and you know if a movie exists it probably makes sense to make it a theme park ride. Um, and they they didn't drag their feet with Frozen, although to build their first Frozen lands, those are just opening now and next year, finally, 10 years later. Um, it's, you know, there's no doubt there was going to be a Frozen land at that point. Someone was going to build it, but how much they dragged their feet and how long it took them to make that happen, it's it's kind of crazy, right? I, I think a Frozen land should have probably existed five years ago at this point. But. It's interesting because if you can do it quickly... Uh, or you could do it well, and very few people do it quickly and well. Um, I guess we could say there's a new Minions Land at Universal, but it's kind of junk. It is junk, right? It's oh. it's but that's not fast. Thrown Minions together been quickly. Out for, Minions been out forever. Well, I mean, they're cranking those movies out as fast. They're like yeah. Fast and Furious, right? Like every time you turn around, then one of the there's a Minions and or a Fast or Fast and Furious movie coming yeah. out. So those are franchises more than they are film individual yeah. films. I think. No, I just I think you could still build a land like you know Pandora or anything like that in five with five or six years, ten or eleven to get a Frozen Land with the same ride again. Anyway, seems kind of insane. Yeah, but it's the same. It's the same ride, but it's the same ride that has not been built yet. This is a ride in Epcot that existed. Yeah, they but blocked still, off ten a or wall. eleven years to build. That I mean, how they long didn't did even take, fix the lift. How hill? long did it take them to construct Maelstrom in in eighty seven? Like probably a year, maybe yeah. a year and a half. Like come on, I don't know. Eleven, ten years for Frozen to finally have a land that that took way too long. I mean, there's something we said. You could have a concept for a ride and not have the IP for it yet, and start the design process. Right. Oh, sometimes you have a a ride in mind with 
uh, an IP that doesn't succeed and then you just kind of hold on to it and are like, well, I guess we'll wait for something good, right? That's what happened with Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Yeah. Um, that was designed as a Van Helsing ride. Um, they Can were you build imagine a Van, a Van Helsing oh, ride? There's blueprints for it out there. So it was oh, Van God. Helsing that tanked and then they met with J.K. Rowling and were like, look at this cool KUKA arm ride system we have the patent for. And they were like, yep, that's it. Cool. It is Let's a cool ride system. It. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, I can't ride it more than once, but it's a cool Same. ride system. <laughs> Looking forward to there being another one in the new oh park and <laughs> the epic universe. Uh, the Great Muppet Movie Ride, Disney's Hollywood Studios. Yeah. The Great Muppet Movie Ride is an abandoned concept for an attraction at the Disney MGM Studios. The attraction, which was meant to parody the park's own Great Movie Ride, which is now, of course, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Oh, you didn't write what... I wrote a joke there. You didn't read it. I know what you're saying. Okay, so I'll... So it says... I'll I'll do the joke. The attraction, which was meant to parody the park's own Great Movie Ride, which Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway now does in a completely different fashion... (laughs) I don't think it parodies it. It might well, in, it might be an insult that it's yeah. there. Um, it would have brought guests through a variety of set pieces in which the Muppets attempted to recreate scenes from classic movies such as Frankenstein and Peter Pan. Plans for the ride, which would have complemented Muppet Vision 3D and a new Muppet Studios section of the park, were abandoned after the merger between the Walt Disney Company and Jim, Hunson, Jim Henson Company uh, fell apart. I mean, who didn't want this? Who wouldn't want that? Yeah. I would I would give up a lot to, to yeah. be able to have that. But So I can I plug stage eighty nine for a minute? Sure. I'm not People that we have registration earlier. open yet. Um, we're doing an event to celebrate thirty five years of the Disney MGM. Me and Stop Dennis, hitting man. Dennis. Dennis. Sorry. Dennis, you have permission to hit him back. <laughs> Sleeve <laughs> hit you. Um Stage 89 is an event we're doing to celebrate 35 years of the Disney MGM Studios. That'll be in May. It's May 1st through the 5th of next year if you're planning to join us here in person. A part of that event will be um, we will do a day or two of presentations from our studio uh, just down the hall. Um, And one of the guests we will have at that event is Marcelo Vignali, who is the Imagineer who drew up the concepts for the Muppet Studios and the Great Muppet Movie Ride. So we're going to talk with him through the creative process behind this land and attraction that never were um, at that event. He's currently uh, locked in to do the event. We'll have registration details hopefully very soon, but, uh, yeah, just a little tease for you. What's interesting to me is how many young people connect with the Muppets today because yeah. I would like to think I was growing up kind of in, when Muppets were in their heyday, right, the Muppet Show yeah. and all these things that were going on surrounding yeah. the Muppets. They and were on Saturday Night Live. People yeah. forget about that. Yeah. Then whole, there was the, the Muppet Babies season. cartoon. In the, I grew up with Muppet Babies. That was probably the 80s. Yeah, right? that was my childhood. And I don't know, you know, they're they're still cranking out Muppet stuff, but it's not like it used to be. It used to be a, like it was on TV every week, yeah. like national TV, when there were only three or four channels for you to watch. Yeah. So I I give this one a hearty thumbs up. Uh, if they want to add it tomorrow, I'm all in. Yeah. Knock down whatever you want in that area. Careful what you leave wish. baseline tap house <laughs> alone. <laughs> no, you can knock that down. It's no good. <laughs> knock down Pizza Rizzo, knock down Mama Melrose, whatever you got to knock down That's to make fine. room for this. Galaxy's I'm, Edge, whatever. Uh, yeah, <laughs> parts of Galaxy's Edge. Uh, do you want to take this one? Because oh, this one's going to get you fired I up. I sure do. I love this. This is going to get Tom fired up. Time Racers at Epcot, uh, which we're heading back to that Project Gemini again. Uh, Even Spaceship Earth was set to be replaced as part of the overhaul. The entirety of Future World would be renamed Discovery Land, the same name used by Land at Disneyland Paris. Time Racers would have taken over Spaceship Earth. The existing slow-paced Omnimover dark ride that occupied the interior of the building would have been ripped out, and in its place would have been a steel roller coaster that would race past scenes from different periods in time. It would then have retained the essence of Spaceship Earth, but would have been aimed squarely at thrill-seekers rather than families. At certain points, the coaster would have even blasted in and out of the Spaceship Earth facade, forever changing the look of the park's icon. This is a terrible idea, right? Yes. <laughs> I. It's one of those things where now it's aged to the point where I am just fascinated by it, and I kind of want to 
at, at some point, if we gain the ability in this world to jump into alternate timelines, my first stop is the one where this was built, just to see what it turned out like. And the thing, like, it's worth pointing out, Spaceship Earth is a very large building, yeah. but it's not the type of structure that lends itself well to being a gravity building for a roller coaster. So it wasn't like a full roller coaster, right? We're talking like a fast portion, like you the do mummy. like a little move, there's a scene, and you do, yeah, I think that's more what we're, that's where we're at. Yeah. Yeah, this has been a terrible idea. Look, Spaceship Earth is in a sad state right now. Yeah. The Omni Mover there needs a little work, right? The, the track and the vehicles and all that kind of stuff. But I think we're to the point now where that ride always needs to exist in some form in that building. Am I, am I wrong? Are you open? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we've reached that point. But we've reached that point with the great movie ride, too. But no one cared. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right. Oh, you have the honor of talking about the next one. Uh, this was for Disney's America. Yeah. An unbuilt place. Unbuilt park. Unbuilt park. Uh, the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution was a steel roller coaster that was planned for Disney's America theme park in Virginia. The land was simply called Enterprise, a factory town. Mmm, the factory towns. Uh, showing off America's Industrial Revolution. This land's main attraction was a steel and inverted type roller coaster barreling through a steel mill. The ride's climax would have been a narrow escape from a fiery vat of molten steel. The inverted roller coaster would have been Disney's first. While zooming and dangling through a steel mill, riders would have experienced intense heat. I hope in that alternate universe that Disney's America also exists because I desperately want to visit it. All I think about is that it like it involves child labor somehow, like the Industrial Revolution. There's like a six-year-old kid working in a steel mill. It's all the, they just built a bunch of the animatronic from Spaceship Earth, the newspaper boy. Yeah. <laughs> just built a lot of him. <laughs> extra, extra. Ow, mister, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so we could probably do a, we do a whole episode on Disney's, on Disney's America, America yeah. right? A lot. What's funny is a lot of Disney's America does eventually get built at California Adventure, right? Um, so there was like the State Fair section. A lot of that became Paradise. Uh, everyone's Pier. favorite part of DCA. That became yeah. Paradise Pier, essentially, right. right? The Lewis and Clark Expedition became uh, Grizzly River Run, um, and there was a, a section about uh, I think it was Victory Airfield. I forget what the name was. Soren. I mean, that's, that started Disney's America. A lot of Disney's America became California Adventure because it was all developed. And you're like, well, just, I guess we'll just do this. Yeah. Uh, we, we can't get too deep into Disney's America, but we I, won't. definitely something worth But there's of definitely episodes. more on this list. Um, island at the top of the world yeah. at Disneyland. Disney planned but never built a new land called Discovery Bay, which would have contained a reproduction of the Hyperion airship protruding from a recreation of Captain... Brew. Brew. Brew's hangar. Uh, sections of the design of this land were again used for uh, Disneyland Paris's Discovery Land. They did eventually build the Hyperion, um, which resides over the one of the worst counter service restaurants in, in the universe. Uh, some of the land allocated. Oh, no, it's okay. You can name the restaurant. Give them a plug, Tom. Cafe Hyperion? Yeah. Or Cafe Hyperion? Uh, some of the land allocated for Discovery Bay eventually became Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. We talked about this on one of the two previous episodes. Uh, the centerpiece of the entire land, though, would be an attraction based on the island at the top of the world. The attraction would have been one of the most amazing attractions to ever exist as you traveled aboard the airship Hyperion to the Arctic. Uh, here you would stumble across the remains of a lost city of Astrogard, a place where mythical creatures lived in abundance. The ride would have combined filmed, uh, film, miniatures, and audio animatronics to great effect. Obviously, the movie was not a huge hit, um, and Discovery Bay was canned, and it never happened. I love that movie. Yeah? I don't know if it's always on Disney+, Plus, but if you have the chance to watch it. I've seen it, it once. It is right. not a good movie, but for some reason, the, the aesthetic and yeah. the sort of setting for it is still uh, fantastical and interesting to me. Yeah. Um, the plot's a little weird. But I think in the Hyperion, the style of the, this style is right up at a lot of people's alley, right? You look at the Hyperion yeah. airship, and it's I mean, right Discovery in the Land middle of that Paris. like steampunk sweet spot yeah. for a lot of people. Discovery Land in yeah. Paris is gorgeous, so yeah, I mean, this would have been great. Discovery Discovery Bay would have been tremendous. Yeah, would have been fantastic. Oh boy, 
I love this one. The Creator Country 500 so at good. Disneyland Park. Uh, concept art for this attraction has been released from Kirk Hansen, showcasing a very different attraction for the Country Bears instead of their musical show. This ride would have been located in Disneyland, where the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh attraction is currently, uh, thus replacing Country Bear Show. Uh, Henry and Sammy the Raccoon, uh, according to the concept art, look like they would be the broadcasters of the race. Uh, yeah. More art shows Gomer. He's the beloved uh, piano player. He'd be in charge of steering some kind of contraption for the race while he's, uh, instead of tickling the ivories, I guess. And Ted swapped his corn jug for helping his vehicle that slightly resembles, well, an outhouse. Yeah. Um, some serious wacky race vibes. It looks like wacky races, yeah. Um, yeah. I love this. I would die for another country bear attraction. I would die for this. I, oh my God. The country bears hosting a like hillbilly bear race event. Um, man, I'm all over this. I would like it if they used, like, if it were similar to Radiator Springs Racers yeah. and you could change the who wins. And you're like Zeke and Zeb and Ted, Tennessee across the finish line. That would be really good. And I guess you're in like, Homespun soapbox derby. Probably, kind of yeah. Vehicles. Is that, yeah. that look what the concept art looks like? No, I don't know. It's probably it's it's kind of like an Utopia ride. I think we never really saw the ride system. Did we really just know what the bears looked like? I don't think this made it very far. I think this was an attempt to save the bears. They knew they were going to close the show at Disneyland. I think this was an attempt to save it. I think everyone knew the Winnie the Pooh ride was not the right choice for the venue. It was too small for it. You couldn't even do the dark ride in the way it was meant to be done. Um, there was a disaster project, so, yeah. Well, we talked about it, I remember a few years ago when we did this for March Madness, that there was this, there's this tendency of them to always portray animals as, like, hillbillies. So, uh, this was a good hillbilly race, I, I guess. The Critter Country 500. And, but can you imagine they incorporate Rackety Raccoon into this, you know, when it had Splash Mountain nearby that could do a Rackety Raccoon sure. crossover? He's Serving moonshine was, to the bears. If they wanted to get rid of the country bears in Florida, my big thing was to do, they have the Grizzly Mountain Runaway Mine Cars in Hong Kong. Yeah. You could very easily do that ride with the country bear animatronics, and I think it'd be so fun and hilarious, and I think it'd be perfect for them. You know, I look, I love the country bear show, I know. Um, but but I, I love the characters, right? And I'm not adverse to the characters being a part of a different story. I think that's it can be done. Yeah. But yeah. You want to take this one? Baby Herman's Runaway Baby Buggy at Hollywood Studios. Baby Herman's Runaway Buggy Ride would put guests on the set of a new Roger Rabbit Baby Herman cartoon, Tummy Trouble. As you made your way past Baby Herman's trailer, you would hear that the diminutive star is inside the trailer and he's throwing a tantrum. Baby Herman would be saying things like, that sequence is is far too dangerous for a star like me to perform, Raul. You better go hire some stuntmen to take my place in that scene. The next thing you know, the cartoon's frantic director is walking up to you and your party in line asking you if you'd like to take Baby Herman's place in the picture to shoot a brief scene for the movie that's perfectly safe. That really shouldn't be any problem at all. Before you really have a chance to think about the question, you would suddenly find yourself in Maroon Studios' wardrobe department where you're being fitted for a giant baby bonnet. And next thing you know, you and three of your close personal friends are being loaded into an oversized baby buggy. Uh, the ride itself would have been a dark ride like uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, but careening through a hospital. I love this. I mean, I'm a big Roger Rabbit fan. No. I love this. No. Put us in the bonnet. I love this pre-show idea of the, the director like begging you to be in it, and then they whisk you off, and you put the bonnet on and ride this. Oh, I love it. I'm all for a Roger Rabbit attraction. I don't like Baby Herman. Oh, it's mean. He's I just don't. I, I don't know. I don't like the idea. I mean, it's, it's a funny image, but the character is a little, I don't know. I don't think he could carry the attraction. Especially if you have no Roger Rabbit attraction. Well, it was the secondary attraction in the land. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it wasn't meant to be standalone. No. I don't know. I, I'm going to vote thumbs down on this one. Okay. I'm glad they didn't do it. I would rather, again, let's clear more real estate for the great Muppet. Well, it said we got Rock and Roller Coaster. Yeah. So, yeah. is that where it's going to be? Yeah, it was Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, here's one I like. Yeah. The Enchanted 
Snow Palace, mm -hmm. and that'd be at the Magic Kingdom. Um, the Enchanted Snow Palace was an unbuilt attraction planned for Fantasyland at Disneyland and the Magic Kingdom in the late 1970s, inspired by Hans Christian Andersen's The Snow Queen. It was primarily the brainchild of Imagineer Mark Davis and conceived as a musical adventure set to the Nutcracker Suite, journeying through the icy kingdom of the Snow Queen, featuring frolicking penguins and polar bears, walruses, snowball men, and other creatures before arriving in the Snow Queen's court. That should be early 70s, yeah. by the way. Uh, it says late. Yeah, so, um, it should be early. The concept was shelved sometime after 1977, as Disney's priorities became focused on developing thrill attractions as well as constructing Epcot Center. The unbuilt attraction would be briefly profiled in the defrosted Disney's Journey from Hans Christian Andersen to Frozen bonus feature on the Frozen Blu-ray release, which notes a striking resemblance between Mark Davis' Snow Queen and Elsa. A slideshow presentation of Mark Davis's artwork with music was also presented at the 2014 Destination D event for D23 members. And then uh, also, uh, it's in the Mark Davis book. The Mark Davis Goes to right. Red book has a section, yeah. Mark Davis, I, I would do, I would, I'm on board for any Mark Davis attraction. Yeah. If he create, it could be about the Crusades. I don't he care. Had if the Mark weird Davis, stuff. he can make it funny. He no, can make but it he interesting. Had, he had some weird stuff that it's probably good wasn't built right. The Kachina doll thing was his. So there well, was yeah, this, yeah. this elaborate project where he was going to add, um, I think it would replace the um, um, Grand Canyon diorama and the railroad. It was going to be all these Kachina dolls. It was really weird. He also did the, I would have loved it, but the Fort Wilderness Funhouse thing, the, the chicken Coop. Yeah, that's gonna be yeah. on here. That's gonna be on here. That's on here. Oh, well, good. We're in. I don't know about if it's that. today, but this it's would be have on. been fantastic. I'm sure. Um, this was one of those things where again, it's we want to do some original things for Magic Kingdom, but but Roy Disney didn't really want it. He's like, let's do what, what we know people like. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because you go from this era where they were just willing to pick up any story that a kid would listen to and and make a, a ride concept out yeah. of it, right? To like now, it's all very IP focused. But yeah. this one, obviously has so much Frozen written all over it yeah. that, um, you know, it's kind of uncanny. It's almost yeah. like they maybe someone... Well, I mean, Disney, if you watch that feature, that documentary on the Frozen mm -hmm. Blu-ray or wherever, um, Disney wanting to do the, the Snow Queen goes back to Walt's time, Oh, yeah. Right? So it's, you know, it's one of the most famous stories of all time. It was inevitable that Disney would do it at some point. Yeah, we. I think everybody knew they were going to do this at some point. Yeah. But I think, like, Mark's art in this case, what, if you've seen it, yeah. is is really beautiful. It's gorgeous. And I, I think this would have been a huge win. It. I love it. So cool. Mickey's Madhouse at Disneyland Park. Dumbo Circus Land, which was on the drawing boards uh, at Imagineering before Toontown was conceived, featured Mickey's Madhouse, essentially a wild mouse roller coaster in a dark ride environment set in the world of the early black and white Mickey Mouse cartoons. Ward Kimball, one of the legendary nine old men, was involved in the planning of the prospective land. Uh, of course, we talked about it. Dumbo Circus Land was kind of the companion to Discovery Bay. They would have been designed and built simultaneously with Circus being the transition from Fantasyland and eventually taking you into the steampunk realm of Discovery Bay. Um, but this this sounds bad until you get to through black and white Mickey cartoons, right? And wild Mouse coasters are not fun. They're not really very good. But the yeah. idea that there would have been vignettes from classic Mickey cartoons could have made this something interesting. I, and I think that that's been a thing that many people have suggested that Minnie, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway should have been as sort of a journey through Mickey Mouse where you start with, you know, the old stuff. Look, at, I, I love the look. It's funny you mention that. Continue. I don't think it's on here because I think this was before that even got built. Um, the Great Mickey Ride. Yeah. Great Mickey Ride was a journey through the history of Mickey Mouse. That was the first thing that was pitched to replace the Great Movie Ride. It was on track, and then someone decided the Mickey Mouse shorts were the way to go. Great Mickey Ride was... The right idea, right? I think I we could have been in a very different world where we, I think we could have been in a world where we are like, you know, I missed the great movie ride, but this is this is something people really wanted for a long time. This is great. I I think it would have been better than railway in every imaginable way and would have spoken to more people. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of problems with railway, but um, one of them is I think the imag the animation style. There's a lot of criticism of that that they chose this sort of. 
people call it Ren and Stimpy yeah. style. Um, and I, I, don't I think that, that if you fun. have some of that incorporated into an attraction that celebrates the progression of Mickey Mouse. That could from, have been at the end, absolutely. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, then, then, then that's finding that context. When you build the whole ride around this. And it's uh, incoherent. It's not funny. Yeah. Like those shorts, let's be honest, they're not my cup of tea, but I know, I, I see people like them. I see they're funny. Mm-hmm. I don't think the ride at any point is funny. Like I don't. I don't, other than like the only point at which I'm like, oh, it's a trackless ride through the madcap cartoon world. The only time I feel that is when we accidentally bust into a dance studio and they dance. And then it goes back to being like boring again. Like at no point does it have that frantic. There's like a, there's like the jackhammer. That's about it, right? There's a, they're like in the busy city honking it's horns all flat jackhammer. Here. It's um, just junk. And there's like, there are parts of that. Like I think that part when you go over the, Waterfall is a fun little thing, but I the whole ride as a as I a like whole the doesn't pre-show. Really... I like you bust through the screen. Yeah, the, the pre-show is great. Yeah, the load area is pretty. The rest, I'm just like this. Is... I think my problem with the dance studio uh, isn't that I don't like the dance studio. Is that it doesn't fit with the rest of the ride. So maybe the rest of the ride should have been more like the dance studio, which is you go from these very brightly painted kind of you know glow in a dark paint type of uh, backdrops going through all this stuff, uh, flat flat stuff or you know very little dimension to it, and then you go in and there's an animatronic Daisy there and everything just looks like you're in a real dance studio as opposed to this cartoon world that you were in for everything else. I suppose. And and maybe they I don't know I don't want to get into critiquing Runaway Railway because no, it's been done ad been nauseum by me. But but also I think that. I think it's important to point out that there is a missed opportunity here where they were on to something, right? Because at this point, you're like, how many attractions feature Mickey Mouse? And it's like, I don't know. It looks like people have been trying to do these forever. Zero. And then and the then, answer is then to do And then we finally come up with one. Yeah. Then it's, it misses the mark for a lot of yeah. people. I, I get it. It's going to be po- – it's a popular ride. It's going to be popular. Is uh, it, though? It's already off of the – uh, individual lightning lane at Disneyland, which I think tells you everything you need to know about it. But Disneyland is a different story, right? Disney. Well, I mean, there are things to do in it, and as opposed to Hollywood Studios, that has five things, right? Yeah. But again, we won't. But Disneyland has a lot to, of e-ticket rides there. We don't need to dwell on it. Yeah, of course, you get to see it in a park where it's one of three things. You know. Yeah. It's very easy. Right, the next you, one's you. Is it me or I you? I believe I just read that one. Okay. Didn't I read? Yeah, that yeah. was mine. All right. The Denmark Pavilion at Epcot. Yeah. There were efforts to bring a Denmark Pavilion to Epcot Center involving Lego. One thing that is known about the pavilion is it would have featured some kind of miniature replication of Tivoli Gardens. Uh, the other plans included for the pavilion uh, were for the pavilion to hold a few flat rides like carousels and Ferris wheels. These would have been the only flat rides in the park, giving the pavilion something exclusive in the park. The flagship attraction of Denmark would have featured Lego. It would have been a boat ride, but beyond that, it isn't really known what the story or theme would have been beyond Lego. There are some articles out there about the Lego involvement, but yeah, that's kind of... That would have been weird because we like, we've had um, sponsors for attractions that have their name on an attraction. Yeah. Are there attractions where you go through and it's all product placement, though? You know, where you're going through and it's Lego products in there. I don't know. That's kind I mean, of there's been lots of things that are product. I mean, the Carousel of Progress was product placement. Those are all GE appliances. Um, the current version of Carousel of Progress doesn't lean so heavily I don't know that that's it. so overt, though. Oh, it was. It yeah. was super overt. Mm-hmm. That changed when they did the 90s version where GE wasn't around anymore. But no, it was. I mean, Carousel of Progress absolutely was just to sell you appliances. That's I don't think I remember that. That's well, that's interesting. I, absolutely. Yeah. You know, of course, I I went on the Carousel of Progress many times back before yeah. it was changed. The old song. He's always in a room full of appliances. <laughs> we got to move to East Cola TV. Uh, <laughs> you know. The uh, Denmark Pavilion, like. Tivoli Gardens is important because that was yeah. the inspiration, really, many people say, yeah. of of Disneyland, right? Yeah. I've been to Tivoli Gardens. Uh, there was, believe it or not, gunfire in the park the day that I was there, which doesn't sound like the Denmark you would expect. But, yeah, yeah. I was there uh, getting ready to go on a Disney cruise, went to Tivoli Gardens, and then later found out that I missed a gun battle of some kind. I don't know. But it is beautiful. It's really um, 
charming. Yeah. I think it's it's it should be on any Disney fan's bucket list to go to Tivoli Gardens. Yeah. And it's not expensive, right? It's, it's yeah, it's reasonable, I'd say, to go there. But the Denmark Pavilion, I I think that would have been good. I don't know. It seems like the Lego theming would have been bigger than the actual celebration of the country's yeah, culture. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. No idea. Fort Wilderness Funhouse. Here, Here we go. A wild Mark Davis idea. The Funhouse was a walkthrough attraction envisioned for the Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. Your hosts were the original builders of the hotel, Jasper and Maud. Jasper is a meek and mild-mannered uh, man and a tinkerer who has created many of his own inventions and additions to the hotel, including the whirly gigs that abound on the roof of the building. Maud is a heavy-set, strong lady who likes her pet chickens very much and is a hero worshiper who has named many hotel rooms after her idols. The entire hotel is filled with Maud's chickens who roost wherever they feel like it. These chickens cluck, squawk, sing, and talk depending on their mood. All over the hotel, these hens provide gags and comments on the various experiences. Each room has its own character in terms of the design and function within the hotel. In addition, a number of rooms were named after Maud's famous guests, Paul Bunyan, Ichabod Crane, Johnny Appleseed, etc. The overall feeling of the hotel is that there was a genuine attempt at creating the best hotel ever, but that in the building of it, things were not completed to exacting specifications. If it looked good to Jasper and Maud, they nailed it down and painted it. This would have been such a weird, kooky, fun thing. I love this. And it's a shame. And then this was, again, it's a very different time in the 70s where you built a Disney World that is only going to have one theme park. Right. In its existence. That's it. Yeah. And so you're building a world of other attractions and recreation beyond the single park. And so you have all these water sports and everything at the Polynesian and the Contemporary. Um, you have golf. You have all these things. And then you go to Fort and you have hoop de doo and river – you know, the water park and river country um, and horse rides and there's a train to ride. And, and so th it's like, well, what if there was like a fun house at Fort Wilderness? And this, this is the idea. And it's I, I think that cool. reinforces this idea that um, – we've changed what it is to go on vacation. And I think back in those days, like Fort Wilderness is like, Fort Wilderness, if you go there, it feels like it's intended for you to relax and be on vacation yeah. and do things, right? Yeah. Do archery and gold digging. And Segway tour. Segway tours. That, like you can go to Fort Wilderness for a week and not go to a theme park and have a blast. That's what we did in August. Right? And so now you right have now. an attraction here. Yeah, you have an attraction added yeah. to, on top of all of that. I mean, it's bizarre because I'm sure this would have been pretty expensive to put together. Yeah. And how do you get the rest of the world to experience it? You know, you're going to have to come out there to Fort Wilderness, which is how not do easy people to, go to do. How do people get to Hoop de doo I mean, yeah, Hoop de doo I mean, that is part of the problem at Hoop de doo right? When you think about going, you're like, oh boy, now I got to go there and I got to park here and I get, I get on yeah. a bus and I got to do it. It doesn't keep them from selling tickets. Think about how it could have been the 70s, right? Where you could have went to Hoop de doo You're like, let's get there a little early. I want to ride the. I'm going to ride, the, we're going to take the bus, then we'll ride the train. Mm -hmm. We'll ride the train to the settlement. And then maybe, you know, we could go to the water park for a couple hours and then go see this fun house. And then we'll go to dinner at the Hoop de Doo musical review. What a day that sounds like. I love this. This is the world I want to live in. You can do it. Yeah, but the, they didn't build the fun train. House. They didn't build the fun house, and they yeah, you, took the you train. Could, no, you could do it yourself. <laughs> you could, you my you own could, train. They, we'll they're very liberal train. about the, what they'll let you do in your cabin. God. Yeah. Well, I'm going to start building a train when I get back. I mean, I'm not stopping you as long as I'm invited. All right. The Discovery Bay Balloon Ride. I alluded to this one already. Yeah. Uh, again, Discovery Bay at Disneyland. Professor Marvel's balloon descent was a transportation ride that would have taken guests from Discovery Bay to the proposed Dumbo's Circus Land at Disneyland. I assume we have the other Professor Marvel attraction will be in the next episode. Yeah, I think I so. I assume, yeah. So we won't talk about him too much yet. And we, we alluded to this one already. Is there anything else to be said about the balloon ride? Just that it's a train. What is it? Was this like a gondola rig with a balloon? Yeah, like a flying balloon ride that would have went between uh, the circus and it would have been Discovery like the Skyway Bay, up but over the mountain. There would have been a mountain essentially. Okay. That kept Discovery Bay blocked off from the rest of the park, and it would have went up and over it. All right, you want to take this? Yeah. 
a birthday wish for Sleeping Beauty. For the Sleeping Beauty experience in New Fantasyland that was canceled at the Magic Kingdom, the entry point happened as Flora, Fauna, and Merriweather prepare to celebrate Briar Rose's 16th birthday. Smack dab in the middle of the action from the original film. Guests would have been treated to all sorts of interactive fairy magic inside the cottage with Aurora herself as a guest of honor. So the idea is here, here is you're helping put together the surprise party for Aurora, and then she would have shown up and you could meet her and there would have been all sorts of different projection effects and things. This is one of those things, just like the Cinderella one that was planned to be, um, just like Enchanted Tales with Belle, a immersive meet and greet experience where you have more of a show and a personalized experience than just walk up, take a picture and leave. I love these, I wish I would have seen these. I wish these could have been built just to see what they would have been like. Don't get me wrong, I like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, but I would have liked to have seen these. Fireworks Factory, Disneyland Park. A shooting gallery based around shooting fireworks at targets intended for Discovery Bay. It instead became a restaurant at Pleasure Island at Walt Disney World. I miss the Fireworks Factory. Yeah, I figured you were the right person to read this one. I am, because everybody knows the thing that I remember about that place most is that if you went to the men's room, as you're standing there at a urinal on a wall, there's a window. Yeah. I guess being like you're working in a fireworks factory and they keep their eye on their workers so they're not dilly dallying in the bathroom. So yeah. they can, or maybe so you can keep an eye on, make sure nothing catches on fire. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I, it's the only place the I've ever way, seen that before where you can go to the bathroom and uh, look outside while it you're It was doing. kind of a shooting gallery. Yeah, in many ways, the <laughs> shooting gallery concept lives on. <laughs> oh, man. But that's cool. I mean, the idea of, like, you shoot the targets and they, like, take off, and that would have been fun. Did you ever eat at the fireworks factory? I don't know if I did. I don't the, remember. Their food was pretty good, and I like the place. Yeah. There's, like, the way I remember it anyway, and I'm sure we can find concept art or pictures or whatever, uh, there were, like, stacks of, there were, like, crates of stuff kind of piled up separating different areas in a dining room, and, uh, you know, you know, like, don't light a cigarette because yeah. there's a 20 crates of TNT next to you or whatever. Great times. How about shooting gallery? I don't know. Yeah. It seems kind of stupid. All right, should I take the next one? Why don't you take the next is one? It the, is it the Thames? Thames. The Thames? Mm -hmm. The Thames River Cruise? Uh, this looks like it would be similar to living with the land in its boat system. There's not much information about the proposal, but it would provide a guest with a alluring experience, allowing riders to sail along the River uh, Thames and explore historic sites and landmarks, such as the Tower of London and the Palace of Wh uh, Westminster, which would feature a replica of Bid uh, Big Ben. The ride experience actually compares a lot to cruising along the real river in the United Kingdom, but on a much smaller scale. The uh, Thames River Cruise ride never really progressed beyond the planning phase, though. I think it's interesting because this is like the, I don't know, fourth or fifth thing that was pitched for the United Kingdom. Yeah. And not, they chose nothing. A lot of, that's kind of the story of all these pavilions that don't have attractions. Yeah. Yeah, this chose nothing. They thought eventually they'd do something and it just never happened. And that's fine because I like – I think it's a lovely pavilion. You can go back there like yeah. where the stage is. Where but the it's band missing stuff. something But it's a missing sure. a little bit of like yeah. stickiness to it, right? You want yeah. like something that keeps you around there besides, you know, there's a band every now and then and there's a yeah. really nice bar. You know, but it's missing kind of something It's missing a sure. little something. And, yeah. And, you know, over the years, I'm sure it's it's been just someone's always going to pitch something. Until they have something, we're going to keep getting these stories of yeah. what might have been people trying to pitch stuff that never happened. It's kind of sad. But another boat ride for another country at Epcot. It's I like mean, all they had to work with. Everybody you know? just wanted to ride boats. They wanted to have the uh, the Rhine River cruise, right? They wanted to – they had the uh, – Maelstrom, El Rio. Um, El Rio del Tiempo. I almost Maelstrom. think America was a boat ride before it was the American Adventure, too. Yeah. At least in Japan, they were going to have uh, a roller coaster or they were going to have Meet the World, which yeah. we don't even – I don't even know if it's on episode four. It should this. be. Yeah, but if not, we'll certainly world. talk about Meet the World at some point. Uh, but, you know. I love Meet the, the boat, World. When you want people to learn about your country, you put them on a boat. That's yeah. how we do it. Uh, this one would have been good. But, again – We'll see what happens. All right. We've come to our last one already. Multi-level animal carousel at Disney's Animal Kingdom. The centerpiece of Disney's Animal Kingdom was not a tree. It was originally due to be a unique carousel ride. A more traditional ride was considered as the centerpiece of the park, a multi-level animal carousel. 
So they they went through several iterations of the park icon, right? There was Noah's Ark, which was deemed too yeah. <laughs> you don't want to delve was into religion. Deemed too religious. On, yeah. There was the carousel, which I think was deemed too amusement parky, and then eventually they landed on the tree. But the tree was not one of the earliest things, right? I think they made the right choice. Yeah. Oh, the tree ended up being the right choice. I like the tree of life very much. Three hundred twenty-five animals carved. It's it's impressive, right? Yeah. Um, they eventually made the right choice, but but it was a long road to that. One could say it's one of the greatest architectural achievements of our time. I think it is. Has a theater under it. I absolutely think it is. In the mid '90s, the fact that they built a giant artificial tree that they had to, out of an oil dirt. They had to <laughs> calculate how to get three hundred and twenty-five animal faces. Mm-hmm to integrate into this 360 degree facade that you go under, around, you could see it from all these different places. It is uh, absolutely an architectural feat. I, yeah. I, I know you're and I, But it is built it. with like, out of like an old oil derrick. Which is genius yeah. and they're like, oh, there's room in the bottom for a show? Yeah. Like, again, it's classic Disney ingenuity. Like we're gonna build a giant tree, but there's so much more to it. They did some really impressive things with it. No, I think it, I think they made the right choice, at least when looking at the other, especially Noah's Ark or a yeah. carousel. I mean, I'm sure they, yeah. they pitched other things, but I think that I think they did well. Yeah, and they eventually did. There is one multi-level Disney carousel that got built. It's a Disney Sea in Arabian Coast. Is it fun? I think it's cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big carousel guy, but I, of all the Disney carousels, that's probably that's probably my favorite one. I think. Not counting the carousel of progress, I guess. I mean, like actual like horse yeah. carousels, right? I always liked the one at, at, at um, Paradise Pier, the King Triton one. That was always funny with the sea animals. Yep. And I kind of like, like I hate Pixar Pier, but Jesse's Critter Carousel is pretty cute. And I kind of think like Toy Story Land is still pretty lacking. I'd love to have another more capacity in that park. Just plop that thing in there. Where? Where there's a bunch of room that was meant for other stuff, they could they could put it. You could walk under the roller coaster, and it could be in between like some yeah. of the roller coaster space. I don't know. There's all sorts of room back there. Well, we did it. We've arrived at the end of our list for today. For today, that's episode three of the or part three of four yeah. of this episode eight of our podcast. So we're moving right along, Tom. Right towards our, our series finale, episode 10. <laughs> uh, if you're curious, we are, uh, after this, we're doing a, f- a fourth episode of this, and then the following week, which is the day after Thanksgiving, yeah, uh, we kick off our annual charity fundraiser for Toys for Tots. And we do a 50-plus hour 50 broadcast. Hour 50 hours now. We just yeah. stopped at 50. We used we, to like we, add a little. Yeah, every there was year. one year we did sixty. We did sixty, and everyone wanted to kill me, so I stopped. Yeah, because they're like, you know what, Tom? I don't know if anyone wants to watch us play checkers at four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it started as a twenty-four hour thing, and then it grew and grew and grew until we got to sixty, and then um, we did fifty, and everyone seemed to like the fifty. Right, the idea of starting on Friday night and ending on Sunday night yeah. worked out really well. So that's what we're doing. So it'll be nine p.m. on uh, Friday, November twenty-fourth, starting with WDW News tonight. Uh, and it'll run through uh, Sunday evening at 11 p.m. Um, on November 26th. And somewhere in that 50 hours, we're going to do our podcast live. Yes. We'll do a live episode, hopefully not at 4 in the morning. No, we'll have a prime spot. I can. <clears throat> I know some I know people. A guy. I, can, I can make it. <laughs> I know a guy. Um, but there'll be lots of news tonight. It'll be on there. We'll, we'll be on there. I, I, I'm sure many of our other programs um, we'll be taking part. There's going to be, I believe there's going to be a Lorcana card tournament for, with the staff. I believe that's the thing where Ben oh, is no. just going to destroy us all. Yeah. Oh, no. Don't worry. Ben's just going to destroy us all. I own Lorcana cards, but I've never used Well, we have Lorcana them. cards here we can play with. Do you have to take them out of the sleeves when you play? I don't know. That's a Lucas question. I have no idea. I don't know the rules. But we're going to do, we're going to do that. I think we're also going to bust open. I have the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea board game from 1971 at Magic Kingdom. I think we're finally going to open that and play it. It's already open. It's in good shape. But I think we're going to play it. I have to figure um, out if we can bring back an episode of Locked In. And maybe Back to the Future. Maybe a Boxed In, maybe a Locked In. I don't know. We'll maybe a Back see. to the Future. See what else you There's never, going to be a never pet know. parade, I believe. There's going to be something. It's not wrong. a pet parade. What we're going to do is those of us with small dogs. Yeah. Um, 
unfortunately, I don't think we can inc- incorporate the staff members of big dogs with the small dogs all together. I don't know. Um, Nor are the ki- staff members allergic to dogs. We're going to have like a puppy bowl type of event. We're going to have the dogs. We're just going to r- let them run loose in the studio for an hour and, and uh, show that to everyone. There'll so be it's no gonna less be, poop than uh, we, after so, Thursday. So far, we are confirmed to have one Pomeranian and two French bulldogs, I think. So it'll be quite wow. the party. All right. So, all right. Well, there it is. We've wrapped it up again. Uh, do you want to plug anything real quick or Carousel of Products? Plug We're Patreon. Car- yeah, Carousel of Products, our official store, carouselproducts.com. I don't know when this, when is this episode airing? When In is, a few weeks. Well, what, what is this the November 13th one? I don't know. Or November 14th, sorry. I have no idea. Yeah, sounds, Maybe. sounds about right. The Santa Gertie shirt might be available. It may not. But either way, there's lots of good stuff at carouselproducts.com, and it's a great way to support uh, what we're doing at WWNT. So uh, carouselproducts.com. Yeah, check it out. All kinds of other stuff on there, too. Bins, even if we're out of the Gertie shirt. Shirts, so. hats. Well, thank you very much for joining us. If you want to join and become a wig, we'd love to have you. Yeah. If you don't, we appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. See you real soon.